Engineering ingenuity could pave the way to floating solar panels, providing virtually limitless energy to power population hotspots. Australian research indicates calm waters off Indonesia in particular could host the panels mounted on relatively inexpensive floating structures and generate as much as 35,000 terawatt hours every year. To explain this well beyond my capabilities, joining me now is Andrew Blake, who's Professor of Engineering at ANU. Thanks for your time. Now, look, we read a lot of doom and gloom on climate. Reading through most of this, I was sort of thinking, OK, so it's not going to cost too much money. It's basically a, a really good solution. Um, is it too good to be true? Are there some serious questions about whether this will necessarily work? Is it a bit more sort of theoretical, I guess? I don't think it's um, a question of whether it will work. It's just a question of whether the costs will stack up against alternative places to place the solar panels. Indonesia and Nigeria in particular are going to be the sixth and the third most populous country in 2050. Um, high population densities, they're going to rely on solar power because they have very little wind. That's the nature of being at the equator. And offshore floating panels are going to be, I think, a very important part of their energy mix. Uh, it's important to understand we're in the middle of the fastest energy change in all of history. Um, the speed with which solar is now being constructed is just mind-boggling. It's four times faster than any other technology in the whole of human energy history. It is amazing. Hmm. Yeah, so one of the big issues with solar is finding the land to do it. This obviously theoretically solves that solution. There's a lot more water than land in the world. But we do see these pictures, and in those sort of inland waterways in particular, it's pretty obtrusive. What, what's the idea that you would have to sacrifice use of some of that? I'm assuming it wouldn't affect or how it would affect um, fisheries, ecosystems, drinking water and so on? Well, the important point is that there's very, very large areas of seascape, which is offshore, several kilometres from the shore. And uh, if you go somewhere like Bass Strait or off the coast of Australia, you will end up with very large storms and very expensive structures to defend against large waves and strong winds. But right along the equator, within about five or 10 uh, degrees of latitude of the equator, is the, the doldrums, where it almost never blows strongly and tropical storms don't go to the equator. And so for Indonesia and West Africa, there is this huge opportunity to put very large amounts of solar panels floating offshore in salt water in calm equatorial seas. And these are seas and areas, presumably you've mapped this out, that aren't used currently, whether it just be recreation, but, but shipping, um, you know, whether it be, I guess, migration of, of whales and so on, there's, you've, you've looked at spots that are, that are unused, for want of a better word? Um, so Indonesia has about um, 200 times more calm uh, equatorial seas than it would actually need to provide all of Indonesia's future energy when Indonesia catches up with Australia in terms of per capita energy consumption and when we've got rid of all fossil fuels by electrifying everything. So um, Indonesia is not short of places to put very large amounts of solar panels to provide all of its future energy. And uh, obviously you can put them in the wrong place, but you've got an awful lot of choice when you've got yeah. 200 times as much space. Some of them are quite interesting how they, they're not... Um that sturdy looking, but just sort of floating there. Uh, what about reliability of them in terms of an energy sense? Because a lot of the projects we have in Australia, uh, there's a question mark of how much they need to be backed up. You know, what's the size of the battery if we want reliable energy, which, you know, the vast majority of us do. Is it that in particular seasons around the equator that it's, it's pretty reliable? You're going to get a lot of hours of the sun. And if I guess they're right around the equator, then... If it's all linked up, then it's at some stage of the day there's sun somewhere? Uh, well, it turns out that Indonesia, being a tropical country, has pretty much the same amount of sunshine every day. It rains and then it suns and then it rains and then it suns. There isn't a wet season, there isn't a dry season. And it also turns out that Indonesia has vast numbers of off-river pumped hydro sites all along the mountainous areas in Indonesia. Indonesia has a lot of mountains. It's got hundreds of times more off-river pumped hydro potential than it would ever need to back up 100% solar power. 
So the future of energy in Indonesia really is quite clear. It's going to be solar with backup from pumped hydro energy storage and batteries. It, it's, there's nothing to invent. It's just a matter of, of getting it done. Interestingly, Indonesia has basically finished building new coal plant. The existing systems under construction will be finished, but Indonesia won't build more coal and it won't go into gas. It really is solar is the future because the resource is unlimited and it is the cheapest energy in history. All right, it's an interesting uh, solution. We'll watch on with, with interest, I should say. Andrew Blakers, thanks for your time. Thank you.